Hello students, in this video I continue to speak about equivalent values, but in this case we are going to solve problems in which we have decks that bear interest. So there will be interest bearing decks and this will be exercise one. I will be solving another problem in another video. This first problem will be like this. A payment of $500 is due in six months with interest of 12% compounded quarterly. So in this case, we know that there is a payment, there is a debt of $500, and we know the interest in this debt. So this 12% is not how money is worth now, it's actually the interest in this debt. And this interest is compounded quarterly. So that's the difference in this type of exercise. We know the debt, the value of the debt, but we don't know exactly how much we're going to pay. We know that the debt has interest. And obviously, if we are paying late, we were going to pay more than this $500. And there is a second payment of 800 that is due in 18 months with interest at 10% compounded semi-annually. Again, you have a debt, and this debt is not scheduled to pay today. This 800 is the value of the debt now, but this debt is scheduled to be paid in 18 months with this interest. Again, you are going to pay more than this $800. These two payments are to be replaced by a single payment nine months from now. Determine the size of the replacement payment its interest is 9% compounded monthly and the focal date is 9 months from now. Anytime that you have a problem when you have interest being debts, as a first step, find the value that you actually are going to pay, the maturity value of the debt. So as a step one, consider that this debt is the debt that you have at this moment now. So now at this moment you owe $500 and $800. But none of these debts are scheduled to, pay, to be paid today. The first debt, $500, is scheduled to be paid in six months. So you need to take into account that six months later is the scheduled date of this $500. So you will need to find the future value of this 500, the maturity value of this 500. And it will be easy because you have the interest and it's compounded quarterly. The only that you need to know is how many periods you have here. This debt is 12%, so I'm going to take note of this here. This debt, $500 is 12%. It's compounded quarterly, so M equal four. So I need to count how many quarters are in these six months to know N for putting the formula of future value. Six months, in six months there are two quarters. So remember each quarter is three months, so N equal two here. So we have N and then we can use the formula of future value to compute the maturity value of this 500. It will be 500, one plus 0 0.12 over four, because this is the interest in this debt, to the power 2, because n is 2. Find this in a calculator, 500, 1 plus 0 0.12 over 4 to the power 2. And that gives you here 530.45. This is the value that you need to, be, to pay that date. So in six months is the scheduled date, and this is the amount that you are scheduled to pay. It. The other amount is 800, but this 800 is due in 18 months. So, will be 18 months later when you need to pay this 800. What you need to do is compute the maturity value of this 800 in 18 months. And for doing that, you need to know what is the nominal rate of interest in this $800, and the nominal rate of interest is 10%. So R for this 800 will be 10%. How much, how many times per year this money compound, this interest compound? And I noticed that in this case, it's compound semi-annually, this debt, so M equal two. 
So to know how many periods, how many compound periods, we need to know the time and multiply it by two. The time in years, 18 months is actually 1.5 years. 1.5 multiplied by two equal three. So n equal three is the n that you need to put in the exponent of the formula of future value, three. Another way to know that this three is dividing 18 divided by six because six months is a semi-annual period, yeah? So anyway, this will be 800 times one plus 0 0.10 over two to everything to the power three. So it will be 800, one plus 0 0.10 over two to the power three. And this is the amount that you are scheduled to pay 18 months from now. Let's compute it, 800, open bracket, one plus 0 0.10 over two, everything to the power three equal 926.10. So you are scheduled to pay this. That completes the first step of the problem. Compute the future value or the maturity value of each of the debt. Take into account the time in which this debt is scheduled to be paid. Okay, so after you have this, then you can solve a problem like the previous problems that we were solving about equivalent values. So as a step two of the problem, think in these are the amount, the one, the two maturity values that you compute, they will be the scheduled payments and they will be due in six months and the other in 18 months, as this problem say. Okay, now think in the replacement payment. These two debts are to be replaced by a single payment, nine months from now. So you need to know in which moment is going to be this replacement payment. As a step two, you are going to find the replacement payment or the replacement payments, if there are several of them. In this case, there is only one single payment that replaces these two debts. And for solving this, of course, now you need to take into account how the money is worth at that moment. This is given in a problem, usually at the end. Yeah? Determine the size of the replacement payment if interest is 9% compounded monthly. So take into account now this interest, not the interest of the debt. So the interest is 9%, so the nominal rate of interest, 9%. Take note of this. And it's compounded monthly. So it will be n equal 12, the number of periods. Okay, think where is now, obviously, it's here. But now, nine months from now, will be a point like here. At that moment, you need to find this value that you need to pay to replace two, these two equal payments. They tell me that I'm going to use a focal day nine months from now. So this will happen in nine months, this payment, this is given. These two payments are to be replaced by a single payment nine months from now. So it will be this in nine months. And this point in time will be the focal day because they told me that the focal day is nine months from now. So this will be the focal day. What does it mean? That I need to compute the value of each amount that day. For example, for this 530.45, I need to compute a future value because this focal day is in the future. I need to know how long is this. The time between the scheduled date of this debt and the focal date. So this time here between these two numbers, between these two amounts. There are six months here, there are nine months to the focal date, so nine minus six give you this number here. This will be three months. In three months, I'm counting months because the money compound monthly. So three months, n equal three. Oh, in this case, we don't need to multiply by anything. And again, I need to know the value of this money, this x, that focal date, but the value of x, that focal day, is x, because x is happening that date. So I don't need to do anything with this. To compute the values in 926.10, I need to go back in time, because the focal day is here. I need to know how long is this time between the focal date at this 926.10. 
there are 18 months to this focal to this date and there are only 9 to the focal date so 18 minus 9 equal 9 so this is the time between these two and because there are 9 months n equal 9 because we are counting month month here so n equal 9 so we know the n we know that here we are going to use the future value so the exponent of this 530.45 will be positive but for this 926.10 I will be using a negative exponent because I'm going back in time so I'm going to see the replacement payment x will be equal 530.45 multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.09 that is the interest divided by 12 to the power 3 plus the other debt that is 926.10 with the same factor but now to the power negative 9 because we are computing the present value because we are moving back in time to the focal date okay so that's what you need to do in your calculator x equal 530.45 open bracket 1 plus 0 0.09 over 12 to the power 3 I get for, for this number 542.47 and for the second number 926.10 open bracket 1 plus 0 0.09 over 12 to the power negative 9 I get 865.87 add these two numbers and I get the value of x 1408.34 so I can answer that the equivalent single replacement payment is 1408.34 and that complete my explanation of how to solve this problem in a future video I will be solving one in which the debts are to be replaced by two equal payments but that will be in another video so I hope you have found this useful. Thank you.